Hey y'all, I am Professor Collins, and today we are going to be doing a workshop on charts and graphs. And so today we're going to be working on histograms, pie charts, and line charts. Um, now there's different types of graphs you're going to want to use for different types of data, um, but your charts are going to be based on your frequency distributions. Um, so it's, the, it's assumed that you've created frequency graphs or some sort of frequency table. Um, I tend to use, uh, I tend to use, um, uh, what are they called? Pivot tables um, to do this. So it's assumed you have done this already. Um, so let's take a look just real quick at our raw data, even though we're not going to really be using it. Um, one thing I like to do with my raw data, just as a note, um, as mentioned before in previous videos, um, these two are the same variable. This is just the numerical equivalent of this. And so what I like to do is create little notes um, to help me identify what my variable um, labels are, or my value labels are um, for these. And so what I'm going to do real quick is go through nominal, ordinal, and interval ratio data. Um, and just do a couple of charts that we can do that, that we can um, take a look at. So if we go to our nominal data here, um, we've calculated before percentages and proportions. Um, but what I'm going to be doing is using specifically these two um, these two values here. Um, so the variable labels, um, or excuse me, the the value labels, the different response options, as well as the frequency of those response options. So I'm going to type in frequency here, and I'm going to type in x there, because that represents our x, and this represents our frequency. Um, so let's go ahead and enter, enter a chart. So what we'll do is let's first start with, uh, with a bar chart. And so what we'd like to do is just do a um, 2D. Um, so when you're doing charts, it's, it's most useful to do 2D charts. Um, it's oftentimes visibly difficult to interpret 3D charts, so that's why we often use 2D charts. Um, so we'll go ahead and place the chart in here, and as you can see, there's really not much going on here. Um, so what we want to do is select our data. So we'll get this little uh, chart data range, and we'll, we'll shrink that a little bit, and we'll just click on our um, data values. And we'll blow that back up and we'll press OK. Um, so the nice thing about this is, is you can kind of mess with this. So I'm going to highlight this and I'm just going to press delete to delete the total. Just makes it a little bigger. Um, we can make this a little bit bigger. And the cool thing about this, um, about doing charts with using something like pivot tables, is you can actually use the pivot table to um, manipulate the data. So because I know 99 is, is missing data, I just want to exclude that. So what I'm going to do is just select that off and press OK, and it will update the chart. All right, so now we can see that um, the, the relative differences between each of these, right? Um, unfortunately, this sort of messed up our proportions, um, which is, you know, it is what it is, so we'll do 10 and 0. There we go. And we'll bring that all the way down. So just to, just to update everything. Um, so, again, as you can see, these uh, now you can see using a bar chart, you can see the relative differences between each of, each of the response options. Um, so that's just a real quick intro to bar charts. Um, so the cool thing about this is we'll just stay in nominal data to show you the, the other types of charts. Um, so we can double click on the chart again, and this little thing will come up, and I, I don't tend to use that a whole lot, so I clear that out. Um, but the nice thing is you can go to um, things like design and add a chart element, like axis titles or data labels. Um, so we can do data labels, say, inside, um, or we could do data labels, say, on top, um, center. There's usually a place on top, outside end. Here we go. Um, so it'll show you the actual frequency, right, the number of people who responded to each of these. Um, but let's take a look at a pie chart, right, because they're, the nice thing about nominal data is it gives you a specific number, so there is 100% here. Um, so we can actually change our chart to a pie chart. So what we'll want to do is go over here to chart type, 
and click on that and click on pie chart and that will just simply change our chart and now we have a pie chart so again the cool thing about this is we can add elements right so we can add our uh, data labels or we can add a legend so maybe we want to do a little legend here uh, maybe we want to do data labels on the outside right and so this gives us a little idea of what we can do um, so we can manipulate our charts in various ways um, now finally let's just take a look at a line chart um, so we'll just go ahead and change this to a line chart um, so the thing about these is they just tell a different story right um, and there's really no right or wrong way to do this um, the only thing to note is that with nominal data bar charts are good to use and history or excuse me and pie charts are good to use as well as um, line charts they're all fine however when you get over to interval ratio data pie charts are not good to use um, pie charts um, his, so for not for ex, excuse me for interval ratio data the thing you're going to want to use most frequently is um, bar charts um, bar charts are, are also histograms which is basically the same thing um, those are going to be the most useful for your data um, so that that would be what I would recommend using when you get into interval ratio data um, with ordinal data I would say with bar charts so that's just your quick tutorial on um, creating charts in Excel. Um, thank you for listening.